Hey everybody, Meredith Oliver here with Meredith Communications. Welcome to the November 2021 Builder Town Hall. We are so glad you are here. There's part of me that can't believe it's November already. Like, do you feel that way? Like it's flown by, I guess more on the work side of life because then on the reverse side, on the personal side of life with the pandemics and various mandates and shutdowns and all the things, it feels like it's going on forever, right? But then on the other side, it's like, how did we get to November the 2nd today? Well, regardless of how we got here, we are here and so are you and we are so glad that you are. So I'm Meredith of Meredith Communications, and we do digital marketing for builders. We build builder websites, we do social media marketing and SEO marketing and all the digital things that home builders need to be successful. Of course, I also do lots of virtual speaking, almost all virtual at the moment, but lots of virtual training and events for builders and related companies as well. And of course, we are the monthly host and facilitator of Builder Town Hall. Also, I'm being joined by my rock star panelists who will come on towards the end of the program today, Carrie Mulcrone of Carrie & Co out of Minneapolis and Florida <laughs> sometimes, right? And then also Angela McKay with O'Neill Interactive by way of Vancouver, Canada. So they will be on later in the program to help us wrap up, find our ahas and to-dos from our featured guests. Before I do that, it's been, a, I don't believe in October, we did a monthly market update so I thought, so it's been a couple of months, so I thought I would do that with you today. I'll tell you, I was very pleasantly, pleasantly surprised with our how October ended up for our clients' website traffic. We're monitoring about 100 builders all over the country and their websites, everything from custom builders to small volume to large volume, and everybody's traffic was up. Up compared to what, Meredith? Up mostly, I would say, month over month. Up over uh, July and August, certainly. And this was a bit of a surprise to me because honestly, with the increase in prices across the country, some of your markets, I'm looking at you, Dallas, Texas, are up $100,000, $125,000 year over year. It's kind of unbelievable to still be increasing website traffic. Now, as a whole, if I take all of our clients together and aggregate on that national dashboard that we maintain, it was actually up year over year, which, but for most of you individually, it was not up year over year. Your website traffic's down year over year, but this is just about the time things went nutty, if you remember, from about here till about April of the following years when things really went off the charts. Maybe some would say off the rails. I don't know. <laughs> but the, the point is that we saw a nice uptick considering that a lot of you pulled your marketing back you slowed sales and we've got massive price increases and the word is out on the street about shortages and delays, et cetera. I was pretty thrilled with October's numbers and the lead generation from those numbers as a whole. Here's three quick things that our clients are doing a lot of right now in preparation for 22. Number one, they're either getting ready to launch a new website or they are frenetically scrubbing, editing, and updating sites for next year. So what's going to happen, and this has been true even in pandemic years and non-pandemic years, is on December the 26th, so you don't have till January 1st, on December 26th, your website traffic is going to start ramping up even more than it is right now. By January the 2nd, it is going to skyrocket. It does this every year. Your website needs to be ready. So 
a lot of you got out of the habit of updating it regularly because there was nothing to update. There were no homes available. There were no lots available. Well, many of our clients now, those move-in ready homes or more, I would say, available homes, they're not too move-in ready, <laughs> they're not quick move-ins, but those available homes that'll be ready in a few months that are now under construction, the inventory, there is some inventory and those website pages are going back up but you're out of the habit of taking all the pictures needed, 15 to 20 per inventory home. You're out of the habit of getting that website updated. So get back in that habit, get it scrubbed and updated or refresh in time for December 26. Second thing we're seeing is a lot of fine tuning with online sales counselors. Remember, if you're feeling good about the first part of your sales and marketing funnel, that's your digital marketing, then the middle part of your funnel is going to be the conversion to appointment. Well, a lot of your OSCs haven't had to ask for an appointment in months. People have been asking them. In fact, driving them insane, wanting to set more appointments than your OSC had appointments for. But as that settles down into more of a normal market, your OSC's got to get back to asking for appointments. So that's the second thing you can be doing right now to get ready for 22. And then lastly, as I surveyed the builder marketers in the marketing mastermind group that we host, I found that most of them had created flexible marketing budgets for next year that allows them to push forward with events if the, you know, the environment allows, depending on pandemic status, or to spend no money on events and spend more in digital, the way that mark budgets are being set up moving forward aren't so much on an annualized fixed set in stone, this is it. But they're looking from their vendors as well as just where, how they want to spend their money. They're looking for flexibility to be able to push the accelerator or pump the brakes, depending on what we find ourselves, what kind of market we find ourselves in. So that's three quick things. Uh, we're looking good this fall. Traffic and leads are still up. Remember to scrub and update websites, getting ready for the new year push. Get fine-tuned with your OSCs, make sure we're asking for appointments, and get and set up and find a way to convince your superiors to allow for flexible marketing budgets so you can move chess pieces around because we really don't know what 2022 will bring. And anybody who tells you they know, they don't know. The more they tell you they know, they don't know because we've, we are tremendously underbuilt for supply. As an industry, we know that. So we think demand will continue to be high. But at the same time, when families are spending $100, $200 more in gas and at the grocery store, and as an inflation creeps up, does that begin to affect us somewhere in 2022? That's what we don't know. And that's why we have to remain flexible with our marketing dollars. Okay. That is it for our update. Let's get to our theme for today. So when I was thinking about uh, what I wanted to do for the November town hall, I thought, wouldn't it be amazing to kick off the month of November, the season of Thanksgiving, with a builder town hall specifically devoted to doing good in the community is good for your business. So that's the kind of title and theme, you know, tagline it came up with today. And there's a specific Simon Sinek quote. I know you all know who Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K, is. He is the famous thought leader that came up with Discover Your Why, which is an international New York Times bestselling book and TED Talk. You can Google that if you're not familiar but this is his quote, and this is a very famous quote. A lot of you've heard it. People don't buy what you do. Okay, go into chat right now. What do they buy? People don't buy what you do. People buy what? Tell me the word. Uh-huh. Sam, Molly Elkman in the house. Hi, Molly. We're so glad you're here. Talk about somebody doing 
purpose business work. We'll, we'll talk, we'll just work that in. I didn't know you were going to be here today. I'm so glad you are. Um, so yeah, so the quote is people don't buy what you do. People buy why you do it. And when they buy why, a number of things happen for you. Here is an incredible quote. Um, Angela will put into chat for us an article that I'm quoting uh, from, from Harvard Business Review. You know, that's like my favorite thing, right? And you can get one article for free here and there. So you should be able to get to this art to this article, okay, without paying for it. More than eight in 10 executives think that a strong sense of shared purpose drives employee satisfaction, facilitates business transformation, and boost customer loyalty. So doing good is not just about feeling good about what you've contributed and contributing to something bigger than yourself. Of course, that is critical, but doing good in your community towards a specific cause or charity, volunteering for something, this is about business results. And I want the leaders that are listening in today to hear loud and clear from our two featured guests that this is about not only having that bigger purpose for yourself and your team, but this is also about building an incredible culture and team that leads to profits and revenue and sales and all of the things that we need to operate a for-profit business in the United States of America. Okay, I'm going to have our first guest go ahead and start her video and turn on her sound while I introduce Jennifer Bynum of McKee Homes. Jennifer is the marketing manager. You're here out of the Raleigh market. And I have to tell everybody on town hall, and I told Jennifer this in, the, in our pre-show, that when I decided this would be our theme for November. McKee Homes was my first choice. And I was like, fingers crossed, please say yes, please say yes. Somebody on the team is available on November the 2nd at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Um, Angela will put into chat for you a link to McKee Homes Facebook page to their LinkedIn page, because when you when you just simply follow them, of course you'll hear about home building and their amazing communities and their product, but you cannot help but observe their incredible commitment to Alzheimer's fundraising and research. And so Jennifer, please tell us how long have you all been supporting this at McKee Homes? How did it start? Just give us a little bit of background about what you all support in doing good in the community. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yes. So I am Jennifer Bynum. Um, I work for McKee Homes, who is a North Carolina home builder, um, specifically in North Carolina. We have four regions in um, the Triangle area, Fayetteville, Pinehurst, and in Wilmington. Um, and so we have been part of the um, Walk to End Alzheimer's Association for all four regions um, for 10 years now. Um, so the company actually was started 10 years ago by our owner, Pat McKee, and his brother. Um, unfortunately, Pat's dad was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Um, and although he had an amazing work life um, and home life, he always wanted to be a builder and build houses. Um, and so when he um, passed away, his brother, Mike and Pat decided to go ahead and start a home building business in his memory um, and created the Joe McKee Memorial Foundation to benefit Alzheimer's um, and to hopefully find a cure for Alzheimer's one day. Um, so it's been since the beginning, it's grown dramatically over the last 10 years, um, but it's an amazing cause that everybody on board here is super excited about. Yeah, and if any of you are questioning, well, how excited could any of them be? <laughs> uh, for example, there is a LinkedIn link, um, Angela, behind the scenes, my co-pilot and co-host. Um, there is a link to one of their employees doing a video uh, that you guys posted on LinkedIn. I think he's on a boat or something. I forget what he, but he's just, he's a builder there at McKee and he's talking about why this is important to him. 
And so you can, you really do get the sense that this isn't just a handful of you uh, one off doing this, like this is a company wide effort. Now I can't help but notice that your branding is all in purple. And like, I see your virtual background with the purple pinwheels. That's my which, real background. It's like real. Oh, yeah, it cool. looks like a virtual. Oh my gosh. People say that to me about mine all the time. Like, <laughs> is that virtual? I'm like, no, <laughs> I worked really hard on that. But anyway, um, now purple is the branded color for Alzheimer's as a cause. Isn't that right? So does that, is that part of your branding as well? Yes. So um, McKee went through an entire rebrand probably about a year or two ago. Um, and one of the things that the company was really, was really excited about is that with joining with the Alzheimer's Association, we didn't want to just do it to where it was something we did it a couple of times a year, or we would help out and kind of throw it on a marketing piece here and there. We really wanted it to be like, live and breathe. This is our mission um, for yes. everybody in the company, to everybody to feel it. Um, both inside, internal, and external. Um, mm -hmm. And so when the company went through that, they went ahead and changed our colors to the, the Alzheimer's colors. Um, and so you will see that in all of our advertising, all of our promotions, um, everything. And it's just one of those subconscious core values that we have of like, this is why we do what we do, right? It's just that little yes. thing kind of connecting it to the bigger picture. Yes. And as we are talking today, those of you who are in organizations that don't have kind of a company-wide sponsored mission or cause or involvement, um, listen for how these folks are doing this. I would also say that that very first article that we posted, the Harvard Business Review article, it is an in-depth, <laughs> as anything is on that publication with steps and ideas, we're not going to get to all of those details today, but one of the main ideas that it emphasizes is this alignment between what your people in your company feel passionate about, a cause, but also this alignment with your brand of your company, because it really has to work together. What are some of the other ways, but beyond just your color of purple, that you all integrate that together? Yeah, so it goes um, from super granular all the way up. So it has a top-down feel to it. Um, when I first started at McKee, I thought this was maybe something that they just kind of paid lip service to. Lots of companies have groups that they do things with um, or organizations that they're involved with. And I quickly learned um, that is not the case at McKee, that really when we talk about being partners with the Alzheimer's Association, we mean that. Um, and so we actually have a standing monthly meeting during business hours every month where we discuss, um, we have groups and teams in each of our divisions. So we have a leader um, who's in charge of spearheading it and they have certain people on their team that help them with corporate sponsorships and registering teammates to walk and getting donations. Um, so it really does start with the company looking at how can we best raise money for ALZ and then how do we break that down into chewable pieces for our associates to be able to take and get out into, um, into the community. So we yeah. go from leadership being involved. Um, our leadership team is involved in all of our meetings. They're the first ones to sign up to walk um, as well as our associates we come up with different strategies throughout the year on events to lead up to the walks um, to raise money. So for this year, for 2021, our goal as a company was to raise $35,000 for the Alzheimer's Association. Um, and included in that is every single, there is a percentage of every single house that we sell that goes to the organization. So it hits that's the another line. alignment. Yes. So it's yes. not just us paying lip service to it is our company commitment financially as well that every home we sell goes a portion of it goes to that. Um, but we have actually kicked our number out of the park um, and are at $50,000 and $50,974 <laughs> for this year. Um, so we're really excited that that's how much we've raised and that comes through a lot of employee engagement. 
Um, our employees have taken this and just absolutely run with it. Um, they have come up with crazy ideas as far as um, fitness classes that are like a rowing, rowing classes um, to raise money for ALZ, um, donations with gift baskets. A lot of our trade partners um, have been integrated into it. And so it's just been a really great cause. Um, and so since inception, we have raised by the end of this year, $456,000 for that's health. incredible. Yeah, awesome. I like, uh, if I was one of your employees, I would feel really good about the idea of the percentage of each sale of each home, because a lot of times companies, I, sometimes it feels like they want the employees to give their money which we're happy to do, right? We want to be, again, we want to do good for doing good, but where is the company kind of putting its money where its mouth is? Yeah. Um, of course, there's an investment of time that they are facilitating and time costs money. I get that. But just further by donating corporate profit, you know, revenue to it, it makes us feel like we really are all in this together. Yep. So that's very cool. Um, one of the like tiny details that I noticed that I've noticed, like it seems like you currently on social have a little hashtag going of hashtag life changing moments on, on your social posts. And one of the things I thought would be interesting for us to talk about is, is this idea of you can post about when well, McKee Homes produces hashtag life-changing moments with pictures of people at closing and with announcements of new communities, but the further evidence and proof of that is that there is also a ton of work being done on this specific cause. Yes, and our hope is that the biggest life-changing moment will be a cure for Alzheimer's. Um, yes. That's really our end goal. Um, but yeah, it is in everything that we do. Um, life-changing moments, obviously buying a home is a life-changing moment for most people, um, for them to grow their families and to create memories. But life-changing moments are also those moments when you realize what's most important to you. And I think that yes. we have a really good foundation of that and trying to yes. incorporate that into our life-changing moments. Um, and that's just our company tagline because it fits in both arenas. It really does. It really does. And so many times we say things in corporate marketing, but I think people have a red alert to anything that feels not authentic and that feels forced. And this type of activity really makes it all come together. So one of the th biggest things I want to accomplish today is making the business case for doing good, because I think most of us in our heart of hearts know how important it is to give back and be part of something bigger. But from a business perspective, what are your leaders? What do you see? Why does it work so well for you guys? Um, I think it works so well for us because it really is something that the entire team is passionate about. So it's one thing if all the leaders are passionate about it, but the associates aren't um, or vice versa. But it's something, like I said, it's it's core messaging at who we are. Um, so mm -hmm. our associates, they volunteer their time. They volunteer financially um, and just so much more. We have all of our trade partners that work with us. Um, we do trade partner events and they sponsor. So it's not just our company, yes. but it's, associate, or it's um, trade partners of ours that are building into it as well. We do um, corporate sponsors who are in charge of all four. And then we have um, regional partners and we go ahead and we post about them on social media oh. and really try to give them some marketing um, as well to realize what a great job that they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. But then I think it's the fact that it's all year long too. Um, so it's not just certain points of the year that we're doing a canned food drive in Thanksgiving time or something like that. It really is something that each month we're trying to do something um, for Alzheimer's and to raise either awareness or um, financial finances for them. Um, we had really creative ideas, which is really fun. We um, do a lot with the Fayetteville Woodpeckers. 
and for Fayetteville, they had a soft or a baseball game and several of our employees went and worked the concession stand there and all the money that they raised from the concession stand went to the Alzheimer's Association. Um, just and any, anybody who's been a parent and worked a concession stand for their school, their kid's school can tell you that is really hard work. Yeah. It is so hard being on the other side of the counter and getting the money and getting the item. It's like, how do they, how do they do this? Yeah. And so, I just it together when they do that, you know, it's not yeah. only is it yes. for ALZ, but it's huge team bonding for us. Um, yes. All, you, you feel excited and empowered when you're kind of doing something for the good of others. Um, and it's just part of our culture. When you walk into our office, it's the first thing you see. Um, it literally is on everything that we do. And we just live it. And I think that's really, like you said, on our social media, you can see that. You can see yeah. the participation we have in our walks and um, just how much fun we have doing it too. Yes. And how much it matters to all of you. And so yeah. if you're a sales manager listening, you're a builder owner, what I want you to be thinking about as you're listening to Jennifer and our next guest stuff is, okay, so understand not everybody in your in your workplace on your team connects with strong as strongly with you on just your basic work mission sometimes what your your employees connect on are these why what we call purpose driven business they connect with you on this and this is what makes them more loyal to your organization. I mean, it would be simple if everybody just believed in new homes, new home construction as much as maybe say I do or Jennifer does, you know, like we're lifelong career new home sales people. That's just what we're into, right? But not everybody on your team is going to connect with that as strongly as they will, again, back to the quote with the what, with the why, with the and why. Say, um, we have so many people that have either purchased homes from us and then come and joined our walks. Um, our communities and our home buyers are really involved in it too, because they see the passion and they feel it. And so it's so cool on walk day when you have homeowners from different neighborhoods, Last year during, um, when everything was virtual, we actually held the walks in our communities um, last year oh, with all the homeowners since we couldn't brilliant. do- Brilliant. Yeah, so it was a yeah. really good way to kind of show people in the communities like, hey, this is really what we stand for. Um, and so many personal stories of theirs, which is really um, just mm -hmm. warms my heart when people see that you're doing it and they validate it in the sense that they can tell your integrity and your honesty in it. Um, yes. have this personal stories, how it's affected them. Yes, for sure. Do you, would you, and if you don't, it, no worries. Would you have an approximate percentage on like the involvement of your team members? Like how many, like, would you say the majority of each division gets involved or where would you ballpark that? So we go through those numbers during each monthly call. Um, we are very competitive against each other. Um, and so we like to see. I would like to say that the sales team at McKee Homes had 100% participation as far as donating and registering, um, which is awesome because then they register their pages and go even further to their, um, to their communities and stuff. Um, and then I would say as an organization, we are probably at about 85 to 87%. Wow. Participation. Wow. Um, yeah. That's so incredible. We, it's really exciting. And the other thing I'll say to um, Meredith, and we hadn't touched on it, I totally forgot, but one of the things <laughs> that's really cool is that, you know, we do this as a, as a company. This is our mission is for ALZ. Um, and I think the reason so many associates buy into it and really are engaged in it is because McKee doesn't just focus on ALZ. You know, Pat, okay. that was obviously extremely important to his family, um, but they're also very well aware that there's so many other organizations out there that their associates want to be involved in. So they also do um, volunteer hours for each associate to volunteer um, a day for whatever organization that they so choose. And then they also do monetary donations for an organization that each employee chooses. So wow. it's kind of a mix of like, hey, you're invested in what matters to me. And so I'm invested in what matters to the overall. Yeah. 
do you guys see why I just wanted to talk to them so much today? That's really, that's really amazing. Um, well, thank you for joining Builder Town Hall. You, um, I forgot to tell you in the pre-show, so we'll just tell you now in front of everybody, if you have to get going for the day, we totally understand. Or if you wanna hang out until we kind of do the final wrap up and we all come back and answer questions, you're welcome to do that too. But we really appreciate you taking the time and sharing the McKee story with us and how you do it and a little bit about it. I'm sure everybody's dying to know more, which is why you should follow them on social because you will start to see what I've seen, which is really cool. Really thank cool. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna bring on the, our next guest, uh, Steph Reed. We'll give her just a second to get her camera and audio on. There we go, there's Steph. Um, if you aren't familiar with Steph, this woman is a dynamo of giving and volunteering and leading and mentoring. I mean, we, like I told you in the pre-show, we really didn't, don't know each other that well, but I kind of feel like I know you. I, I know what you're passionate about because you've been so good about sharing your passions with others. Um, for those of you that don't know Steph like I do through social media, she's a builder and a realtor. Her company is Partners by Design Homes. You're out of the Des Moines-ish market, right? Yeah, right outside of Des Moines. Okay, perfect. We'll stick with that since the rest of us don't know the exact location. Right. But Steph is a tireless, and I do mean that in all capitals, advocate for women in building, uh, women leaders, and our home builders associations, both at the local level, state, and national level. Um, why don't you give just a quick, like, I don't know how you're going to do it quickly because you do so many cool things. Why don't you give us a quick recap of what your um, doing good in the community looks like for you? Okay, first off, thank you so much for having me. It's truly an honor to be here and to hear inspiring stories like what Jennifer is doing with McKee Homes and all of them. That's just, that makes me very excited to um, be it's part cool, of It's cool, right? It's super cool. It's very cool. And I love it when people find a why and they, they stick with it and then other people can jump on it and make something with it. But um, so I'm Steph Reed. Like she said, I'm a custom home builder and a realtor out of the Des Moines, Iowa area. Um, I got done with my first house. You know, I started real estate about 13 years ago. Before that, my father was a contractor, uh, did wallpaper, drywall. I worked with him in my summers and I loved it, you know, honestly. And um, later on in life, I got down to my last class of my RN while my kids were in school and I decided it wasn't what I wanted to do. So I got my real estate license and first time I was in a new construction home, I was like, this is, this is what I remember loving. You know, this is what I was super cool. You know, I just remembered everything about it. So I started working with a builder doing basically all the same things I do for my own company for him, which was a wonderful opportunity for me. And I did it for about seven years and then we were kind of burnt out. I mean, both of us, we were doing just flying Mach 2 with our hair on fire, which is my favorite speed, but, <laughs> but, I know it at, point, <laughs> yeah, but at some point you got to do something different. So I decided that when we decided to go our separate ways, what was I going to do? Well, I decided, you know what? My husband actually encouraged me. He said, you should really be building houses on your own. And I'm like, you know, I really want to, but I'm a little nervous about it, blah, blah, blah. Well, I got into it, started doing it. And I was like, you know, this is awesome. But then I got done with my first house and I looked around and I thought, you know, this is all great, but where are my sisters? I had nobody to share the, the joy, the excitement, anything with none of my contractors. They were amazing contractors. Every single man out there supported me, my business. They liked working with me. It was no problem, but there were no women. And it was just a little bit lonely in that sense. So I called the Home Builders Association here in Des Moines. I said, hey, where are the ladies? And they said, well, <laughs> funny, you should ask because <laughs> about getting a professional women in building set up here. And I was just like, well, what do we got to do to do it? And they said, well, we need you to run it. <laughs> <laughs> That's I the said, problem. <laughs> where do I sign up? Yeah, where do I sign up? So I was the, the founding sister or mother, as I call myself, because I'm older than pretty much all the women that are there, but uh, we started it up and what we wanted it to be was not a social club. 
um, a lot of time, I think people think when women are in an industry that's male dominated and they're in some kind of a group, they're looking for special attention. They're looking to be part of a little clique or whatever. We are not the builder's wives. I mean, some of us may be, but we're not here to do bake sales. We're not here to do that. We're here to make a difference. We're here to let other women know that they can make a difference. We're here to show all children that jobs don't have genders and that the skilled trades are a viable option. College is not for everybody. And had I been, you know, my parents always encouraged me, right? I had a shirt that said, anything a boy can do, I can do better. And I grew up <laughs> wearing that shirt all the time. And my parents instilled that in me, but society didn't instill that in me because, you know, I'm a kid of this, I was born in the early seventies. So it's like right? 50 years ago, things were quite different. 20 years ago, things were t- quite different, but I'm so proud to see where we are coming. Even though we only represent a little over 10% of the workforce in the skilled trades, man, we're coming on. And I have a feeling that those numbers are going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. So mentorship, internships, apprenticeships, we need to let youth know that there are, that those options are there and we need to be walking and setting the example. What's the best way somebody can relate to you and your business is to see somebody just like them doing it. Yes. You hear that all the time. You hear that all the time. And what I'm hoping will come out of today and our two guests is our first example was a really strong corporate initiative, corporate example founded through leadership down through you know a large sized company. What Steph is bringing to the table is if you're sitting here individually today, uh, if you are a business owner sitting here today, if you're a sales agent, She's showing you how she found something that she believed in. She said, where are my sisters? And then she was not afraid (laughs) to take on the development of that cause. She didn't look around and go, well, who already has an organization? Like, well, maybe you did initially, but okay, well, I'm just going to quit because there aren't any. No, I'll have this up here. Now, hopefully you've gotten to hand over the reins eventually, and <laughs> but that's always scary. You know, anytime you're on any kind of committee or council, don't go to the restroom because that's when they volunteer you. <laughs> or don't open your mouth at national. It's if you talk, yes, that it gets to do it. So you have to, yes, yeah, but absolutely. I've passed the reins on a couple of times now. And, you know, we're just a little over three years old, but we have won. Uh, in our group, the women in our group have won about five to six national awards. Yes. And uh, that's, that's just, that just speaks volumes of the passion that's going on in our area. And, um, you know, when you think about that, it's like, wow, we really are doing something that makes a difference. One of our first initiatives was making an activity book for youth. And in that book, and by the way, that's available to anyone. If you're ever interested in it, you can contact me. I can get it to where you can put your own, um, your own, um, what do you call it? Um, Gosh, losing my train of thought logos and your own contact information in it um, for yourself to pass out at your own businesses. And that's what we see a lot of. Um, Right now we have probably 20 plus different councils of PWB and HBAs across the country using that book doing their thing and they're passing it out. And, you know, the thing is, is that we're all in this industry, right? I mean, we're all somewhere within the housing industry. It's, it's going to die if we don't get that workforce in here. It's not going to, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. And it, it already is worse for a small builder such as myself, because it's really hard to get contractors because they're tend to go to where the bigger builders are you know, right now, because I can't keep them busy and a bigger builder can, and they've had to hire crews to get the jobs done. So these are, this is another way to make sure you're supporting the industry that feeds you, you know, That's it really right. isn't an easy way to do it. It's a call, it's an activity book. And inside it says, Hey, parents, have you thought about the skilled trades for your kids? You know, yeah. some of the fun things that we're doing here at a local level and that we do nationally is build my future is my favorite event. It's a We volunteer as a council, but then also I volunteer my own time on the um, on the board of that committee, that committee to help get it going every year. And we had three thousand youth there this year. What three thousand? 
3, and this was a workforce, this was a trade workforce development type of event. It's a one day hands-on okay. activity day. And my favorite oh. thing is, is that we worked with all the unions too, because at some point you have to figure, okay, I know some of you are saying, yeah, well, the unions are big into commercial. Okay, but stop and think about it. If we're all supporting the same workforce, don't you think we're all going to nab some of that? Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to work yeah. together. We can't work mm -hmm. individually. We're stronger together. So we worked with the unions. We've, we've worked with, um, you know, Brandon over at uh, Iowa Skilled Trades and Melissa at the Home Builders Association. They do a beautiful job of putting this together. It's huge. Last year, we had Alicia Huey, who was going to be eventually our president at our um, NAHB. And she came and they did a signing day. So these kids signed on to be part of these apprenticeship programs and college programs that are going back it's into incredible. the trade. And they treated it like it was, they were going to play football at some major university. And that's exactly what it should be. We should be telling kids that what they're doing is just as important as everybody else that gets a letter of intent and, and, and they sign up to go and do it. Um, one of the other things we did here at a local level that I'm super, super proud of, um, and by the way, that Build My Future event will be bigger even next year. That was yes. because of COVID, it was smaller. We anticipate about 5,000 kids next year. Yes. That's amazing. We hold it at our That's fairgrounds. So they do outside stuff. They do inside stuff. They get to work machinery. The welding is my personal favorite. I got to weld a little eagle and it was, I thought it was super cool, um, but it's just amazing. And that's an opportunity for all of us. We built desks and gave back to the community um, because we joined up with another nonprofit at the year before, um, well, the year before it was canceled because of COVID, but the one before that we built sheds for Habitat for Humanity. And those sheds were donated back to uh, the houses that, that had the slabs waiting for them. So the kids got to learn how to roof and side and frame and all that stuff. And then the most beautiful part is we got to talk to other girls. When you see the ladies out there, you can tell them, hey, what would you like to do? You know, and you get to tell them about how awesome it is. And you get to give them your card and tell them that you know about mentorship or internships and not just the women, but the men too. And then those kids found summer jobs working as interns and things like that. And mentorship is probably my favorite thing that we do. And it's probably the most fulfilling thing I've ever done personally. When a girl looks at you and says, I would have never dreamed that I would do anything other than going to McDonald's and making $10 an hour. And this is a true story from one of my mentees. She didn't think she had any, any hope of doing anything because she didn't want to go to college. She was also being adopted. She was 17. She was about to age out of the system. Can you imagine all that she was facing in that in that time frame? And so the blessing came to me that I got to help mentor her and we went to the unions and we got to look, then we came back and then I worked with my electrical company because she decided that's what she wanted to do. She got her internship and then ended up getting a paid internship. And then when I went, you know, I kept in touch with her over the year and um, she is now an apprentice and her goal is to be a journey woman um, very soon. And so nothing makes you happier than to see this little meek girl who didn't really have any confidence, didn't think she had anything to offer in life sitting across from you and say, because of this, I get to do this because yes. of this, I'm going to do something with my life. And you know what I would tell other kids, don't give up, find your thing, find your why, that's right. you know, that's right. Do it. And that's why we as adults in the industry can make a difference. Volunteer your time to mentor. Yeah. Somebody. Now we were talking in the pre-show about how this is something that you're passionate about as a person. And it's a good thing to do. And you feel good about doing it, but you also see value in this to your business. So talk to us a little bit about that. Oh yeah, absolutely. When I tell people all the time that, you know, we help run summer camps for girls and we help do the build my future and they're seeing this on my social media page. Some of the things, the comments that I've heard is I, that's my realtor or that's my builder. Oh my gosh, look what she's doing. They want to be part of it. They, yes. they want to cheer you on and they want to tell other people about it. So if you ever think that what you're doing doesn't matter, you are so wrong. Giving is, back opens doors like you wouldn't believe. I am more fulfilled than I ever imagined I could ever be by giving back and, and just seeing what's grown from that. And I'm so, so proud of that. So town hall audience, I hope what you're hearing is that in Jennifer's case at McKee, their why, of course, translates 
into business results, but a lot of it for them is their own culture and their own employees connecting to their organization and creating that employee loyalty that creates customer satisfaction. Those two things are linked. In Steph's case, I think what you're hearing is that her why that she beautifully and passionately puts out in her social media then connects her customers to her because people do want to be part of something. It, the desire for connection is one of our strongest, most human uh, desires and needs and wants, but connection is different for different people. So again, people might connect with you on what your core business is. They might connect with you because you're a woman. They might connect with you because you're from the same hometown or you cheer for the same college football team or because you're passionate about something they also support or just appreciate the time and energy you're putting towards making things better. And I think, again, that authenticity, that transparency speaks volumes today as to who do we want to do business with. So if your company or you as an individual aren't doing these things, you're missing a core principle of that purpose-driven individual employee organization that's necessary for business today. Absolutely. I mean, it's so, so true. My next question for you, and then my last one, and then we'll bring our panel on after this, would be is, so sounds like you're very busy. You're a business owner. Uh, I don't know how old your kids are, but you have a family. You have oh, two businesses. You have uh, all this going on, and yet you are personally volunteering a lot of your time and energy into a why. How do you find the time? Because I, I know automatically what many of us think is, I don't know how she does it. That's good for her, but it would never work for me. So talk to us about that. Well, first off, you've got to find what works for you. You, I mean, don't force something round into yes. a square. You know, it, it's, it's got yes. to work for you. My children, I'm older, so my children are all grown now. Um, so they're all well out of the house. So I'm at a stage in my life where when I went out on my own, what I decided was what, what do I want to do? Well, I wanted to have a smaller custom home business because I wanted to communicate and I wanted to have a working relationship with people. I wanted to make these people part of my family. I didn't want it to be just another, just experience. I didn't want to just build for random people. And quite frankly, I view it as an interviewing process for both of us. They're yes. interviewing me and I'm interviewing them. And sometimes yes. I, oh, I just don't think this is going to work for whatever reason. But getting back to the volunteer. We feel the same way here at yeah. Earth Communications <laughs> World Headquarters yes. in Raleigh, it's North so Carolina. Important. Yeah, it, it's, it's just so important. Yes, there is a fit, right? There yeah, is there a fit. Is. And you maybe, maybe it's go gung, you know, Mach 2 with your hair on fire, which like I told you is my favorite speed. And it is something that I did for many, many years. And it, I found it very, very fulfilling for that time frame in my life. At this time yeah. frame in my life, I can do whatever I want. And just so, just to remind everybody listening, you can do whatever you want to. I always, I always hate people. Oh, I could never do that. Yes, you can. This yes, you can. You can't do this, but you'll find yes. your passion. You'll find what you need to do. So following, finding the time, I am a big believer in you can make a million excuses as to why you can't do something. So why not just stand up and get it done? I'm, I'm just very much a driven person. And if I see something and if I think I can go and do it, I'm just going to go do it. I might step on some toes, not intentionally, <laughs> but sometimes you just get so excited about things. And I've had to, you know, people have to pull me back all the time. My husband, bless his heart. God bless him for, <laughs> for pulling me back. Yeah. You know, sometimes he does. Yeah. Other times he's smacking me to tell me to go, you know, it's <laughs> hey, go get it girl, you know, but yeah. um, it's not for everybody. It's, you've got to find your thing. Maybe it's starting out small and I'm not telling you, you should go be part of yeah, I also go and talk at the women's prison. That's something else I'm very passionate about. Something else I want to see more come of. It's gotten shut down because of COVID, but I'm hopeful that we're going to get more mentoring and programs in for those women as they're being released from incarceration to come out into our industry and have a career and a life, uh, something outside of the things that they had done before. 
Yeah. And that's just me. Those are my callings. What happened for me isn't that I went up and said, I'm going to volunteer this, 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 and this. What's happened is I volunteered for something. Yes. All the doors in the world for me. And it just keeps opening doors and I keep getting invites. It's awesome. Yeah. It's amazing. Right. Um, The tip that I would give everyone is don't question your impact. What I mean by that is volunteer, as Steph said, to do what you can when you can. If that is helping to draft five emails for a, a, a you know an organized charitable organization or a council or committee because you're good at marketing and you're good at email marketing, that's what you can do that month. Don't question the impact. I think we tend to say, oh, well, I can't go work every Saturday at the food shelter. So I'm, you know, for eight hours. So I must not be making an impact. Sometimes what you can do to make an impact is hold a virtual event once a month and try to bring the industry together. That's what we're capable of doing at this time. So we do it, but don't, don't put it down or make it feel small because it's really just your one interaction with one other individual on this shared why could set them in a direction literally for life. Absolutely. And, and don't forget the other side takes. of that. The yeah, other what side is it? Of that is don't go into it thinking, I'm going to do all these things and it's going to be so big and so great. I didn't go into any of this that way. I, I, I went into, I missed some people that I thought were key. They weren't there. I went and asked how I could help get them there. Whatever <laughs> happened, happened. Who knew? I mean, nobody ever knew yeah. what's going to happen. But don't go into it with the attitude, well, I can do this, I can do that. I mean, and then think that it's going to be all about you because it's still all about the activity. It's still all about bringing other people with you. It's paying it forward. And that's my goal. It's not about stuff, Reed. And I hope people always know that about me. I know I'm doing a ton of stuff, but it's not because it's about me. It's because the door opens and I don't know how to say no, because (laughs) I I just see how somebody else needs it and I got to go do it. Speaking of not being able to say no, let's invite <laughs> Carrie and Angela onto the panel. Um, and Jennifer, if you're with us and you can, you want to join back in too for a wrap up here, you are welcome to do it. While they're all getting situated, I have two things that I want to mention. Uh, one is another virtual event that I'll be doing a week from today. Uh, Angela will put the link in chat so you can register. Uh, Kimberly Mackey of New Home Solutions and myself are going to go head to head a week from today uh, for a very special event of Lessons Learned of 21 and To Do's for 22. And so we'll have a list of those things. We'll debate them or agree on them. I don't know what's going to happen yet, but you are welcome to attend. And then the other thing that I absolutely have to mention, Steph's been talking about the Professional Women in Building Council, of which we are all active members of, local, state, national. Well, one of the best ways you could support the council and women in trades is the purchase of the House That She Built book. That's the house that she built book. Oh, there's your link to Amazon right there. That's Thank one you. Big link. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it gets everybody there, we don't care. So Molly Elkman, who is the founder, president, CEO, all the amazing things of Group Two Advertising. She was on earlier. I don't know if she's still with us, uh, but she is co-author of that book and it is really inspirational about women in different trades and so if you're looking to inspire somebody little in your house or big um a purchase of that would be amazing so that oh hi molly that is my plug for that okay carrie Angela, you've been listening away at our amazing panelists. What are some of your takeaways, uh, ahas, I have, next steps? It's, it's been funny, you know, in the background, you know, and when I hear stuff say, you know, I'm old, I'm kind of going, hmm, really? I know. I had the <laughs> but, same thought. I was but, like, I think we're the same age and I don't. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm like, hmm, 
<laughs> when you know you go through that button where you have to keep scrolling to get to your year, like they're not there yet, they're not there yet, keep going. But what I laughed at as way, way back in the industry and when I, when I realized that when I gave to, gay, to give, give to give, not yes. give to get. Yes. But like, I, I just want to do this because I just want to do this. It's funny because I was on the executive board at our local HBA here in the Twin Cities. And when I used to leave, now he said this lovingly to me, but every time I would go and the kids might say, where's mom going? To the food shelf. She's going to work at the food shelf. And what he meant was once again, I was going to go somewhere to do something and not make any money. <laughs> <laughs> special but, skill there Carrie <laughs> yeah I'm like all righty then yes um, but I do think as I listened to you guys and you talked about everything that you do and you do in your companies and whether it's personally or corporately and I know our tribe in here always likes to leave with like the how-to or the whatever is if you think about I want to give something because I want to give something that you don't try and think like Meredith said, what would make money for me? What would make money for my company? If you just drop that part off and just decide I need to do it, what happens? And I talk to people all the time is all of a sudden it just comes the, the, where you belong, the, whatever it is that you need to do just come. So I'll leave you with my example. And then Angela, I know that you have one is, and both Angela and Meredith know, I was really looking for my give. I think it was like four years ago, Meredith, wasn't it? And I was sitting in church one Sunday and they were talking about how shorthanded they were with Wednesday youth ministries, working with junior and senior high kids. Well, I used to teach and I really missed that part of it. I'm like, count me in. So it doesn't matter traveling or not traveling. I go to get my fill on Wednesday, um, working at church with junior and senior high kids. And I'm better the day when I'm going to go. I'm better the next day when I go. And it was, it just came to me because I said, I got to do something different. So mm -hmm. anyway, give to give. Give and to give. What you got. Well, first of all, Meredith, your message at the very beginning, being flexible, that just kind of struck a chord. And I just don't want ever, anyone to forget that of just the importance of flexibility, mm. not just in marketing, <laughs> but, right? but in life, right? And but, yeah. you know, when you're planning your, our, our budgets and such, I think we have to be flexible because the unknown is the unknown. Uh, but, you know, to me, I have, I loved your message, Steph, when you're talk to, talking about different stages in your life. I'm in that you know, that, that older stage where my kids are grown. So I have a little bit more time and it's easier for me, but at different stages of my life, I did different things, but the, the commonality with everything, whether it was fundraising for kids and your schools and all church and, and all of that, it was, or whether it is, I'm an advocate for mental health. And I, I don't think there is a family that has not been affected by mental health, including yes. my own. And yes. uh, it gets me emotional thinking about it. So I'll stop right there. But it's, it's about building community and mm -hmm. in everything. And if you, it, it has to be first and foremost about building community because that's where your success is. And whether it's raising money or whether it's just bringing people together, it is about uh, awareness and community. And uh, it is wonderful that we are able to give and we're in a position to give. And I think that's um, something that we can't take for granted. Yeah. So and, true. you know, Jennifer, like, and, and stuff both as builders, you, we are, we build communities figuratively, but if we are investing in that building community, really, it, it honestly looks like a complete disconnect. The perception, I think, of the brand. What do you think about that, Jennifer? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, you can't build 
um, houses and homes for people, one of the most emotionally invested things that you could get into um, and not understand that side and understand that there's so much more to just where someone lives, right? You really mm-hmm. have to understand. And they are obviously all the salespeople on the call, they know, gosh, they're getting to know people for like nine months. So they understand <laughs> people's backgrounds and they hear the stories. And if you're not genuine with it, then they can see right through that. Um, and I think or that's longer. Really, yeah. Yeah. Or longer. These days, <laughs> I or longer for like right? You're not getting windows if you don't really have a great relationship with yeah. them. So yeah. <laughs> You know, how would you I, all recommend that either an individual or a company get started with an initiative like this? Really, this is for anybody. How, how do we get started? Go somewhere, sit at a table. Yeah, get, I, sit in the back seat, move to the front seat. Like <laughs> you said, go somewhere, go to the bathroom and come back and they'll say, well, you were just voluntary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm sure everybody knows there's a seat at the table for them just like Carrie's saying there yeah. step up take a seat figure out educate yourself where mm-hmm. what is it that you're passionate about what is it that the need mm-hmm. is what do you want to do to make a difference you know and for everybody who's really, on this call mm-hmm. Meredith and then you can take it a step further is that that there's a seat for everybody just like Steph just said and a lot of the people that are on the call as we started the call saying who's going to the builder show you know the couple days before the builder show actually starts are all the board meetings right and I will tell you that you can go to absolutely 55 plus PWB sales and marketing council and there is a chair for you there and something will intrigue you that actually Afterwards, you'll walk up to someone and go, what were you talking about? Whether it's from their state, their city, or that committee. And that's how it happens. When Meredith and I started, we left Sales and Marketing Council, where she was chair of communication. I was her co-chair. We said, well, let's go grab PWB for a few minutes. We left their chair and co-chair <laughs> of communication and education, yes. too. Yes, we did. But and I what don't... happened after that? Uh, <laughs> and then, you know, Angela ended up chair of well, there communications. Is a seat. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a seat for you. And, you know, in today's virtual world, I just, even if you're the parent of very young children, which is, in, you know, time consuming times 10, you don't even it's not necessarily what you do in person anymore. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can support. And I just want to really stress that idea of not judging your contribution, but finding what works for you. And that's not going to overly stress you out or impact your business negatively because you're spending all your time, whatever. Let the two things line up, let them feed each other. And then what do what you can in the season of life that you're in. And I think, you know, if we kind of bring it all together and bring it with that in mind, um, you're going to be very successful with this, whether you're an individual and a business owner like Steph, who's got a custom home building business and her team and they're super involved, or you're doing a bigger corporate mission like McKee Homes. So If you are, you or your company is really passionate about some particular cause or you're supporting something, you're fundraising for something, please go to the Builder Town Hall Facebook group and please post about it. Um, We have a very hard no selling rule in Builder Town Hall Facebook group, but I will make an exception for charitable uh, efforts and causes and fundraising. Tell us about it. Uh, At least we can cheer you on from social media if it's not something that we can, you know, participate in because of distance or time or whatever. Um, We would love to see what you're doing. Also, yeah, that would be awesome. So please go to the Builder Town Hall Facebook group, post in that. Um, Angela, if you will post the link to Steph on LinkedIn, so that everybody can follow 
her and get connected with her. We did the same thing with McKee. And then there was one more really good article, um, Angel, that you had sent me on purpose-driven business yeah. and marketing. It was really strong. We'll post a link to that as well in the comments because- yeah, so it's got they're some, all they've all been they're posted. all there. Okay, yeah, perfect. They're all posted, perfect. but let me just do Steph's over again so it's front and center. Okay. And then the other one is posted, but we can post in the uh, Facebook chat too. Yes, we'll do that because I want you all to uh, connect with these folks. And so you can see what we're talking about because it's seeing is believing for sure. Okay, so we will meet in December. Um, somebody remind me what is the first Thursday in December? I don't know what the date is. Hold on, I will figure that out. Give me two seconds. But we're all we are gonna meet second. in December the second again. Is it really okay? That's cool. Um, so we will be together the seventh. We will be together December 7th, 4 p.m. Eastern time. I don't know what the theme or the guests will be yet. If you have a suggestion, please send it to me. I need it. <laughs> but I will figure out something timely and relevant for all of us, hopefully. Oh, but if you know so. what that is, I'm in. Um, and then again, don't forget to join myself and Kimberly a week from today. Yep. Uh, link in comments for head to head. It's going to be a good end of the year wrap up. And I think Angela, you're going to be her December guest, she right? Is. I think so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are. I think I think you are. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think I are. am. <laughs> so you'll you'll be able to learn more about that. Um, okay. Jennifer, Steph, I just again thank you so so much yes. for the investment in us that you made today because you made us as individuals better and you made the industry better by telling us your stories and we appreciate it Thank really you we much. do you know yeah. Mary, if i have one last thing please from, from you ladies helped me with all this today and i had heard it from a speaker last week from women in residential construction conference that i was on and i don't remember who said it but as i listened to you jennifer specifically i'm like that is so true is culture is invisible it's something that you feel when mm. and that's what all of you are saying that like put any words you want on your wall make any tagline that you want but <laughs> culture is invisible it's felt and I just had to, cause that came right from that conference. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. And when our culture is something we feel bigger than our ourselves or bigger than the uh, business that we're in, yeah. it's really, really special. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Great, great. Thank words. you. Oh, Thank you, everybody. Thanks, All right. We will everybody. see you next month. We'll see you on Facebook. Thanks. Bye. Bye.